No disease has killed more people in all of human history than tuberculosis, a frighteningly contagious disease, TB infected in the late 19th century, more than 80%, yes, 80% of all Americans before their 20th birthday. And we didn't even get the worst of it. Infection rates were closer to 100% throughout Europe and elsewhere around the world, wherever people gathered in close quarters. Most of these infections were latent or asymptomatic, but they could activate at any time, at which point the disease would trigger a violent immune response that literally consumes the body from within. As far back as 460 BC, Hippocrates identified tuberculosis as the most widespread disease of his time. Far from prescribing treatment, however, the namesake of the Hippocratic Oath warned fellow doctors not to visit TB patients in the late stages of their disease, lest these doctors' professional reputations be damaged upon their patients' likely death. You see, until the 1940s, there was no effective treatment for TB. Indeed, society's only answer to the TB scourge was to weed out active TB sufferers from their midst, sending them off to so-called tuberculosis sanatoria, where they would be given as much fresh air as possible, but remain bedbound until their death or return to latency. All of us, I'm sure, would rather not think about the horror that diseases like tuberculosis wrought on countless previous generations. But we have to remember, because there's a chance those dark days may return. If the drugs that treat TB lose their effectiveness due to antibiotic resistance, there will be little that we can do to stop it from spreading once again, even in wealthy nations like the United States. Moreover, the threat of antibiotic resistance isn't limited to tuberculosis. Concerns over drug resistance have arisen in recent years for many diseases, everything from gonorrhea to hospital-acquired strains of staph, E. coli, and salmonella. Fortunately, if we take this threat seriously and muster our intelligence and will to fight back against drug-resistant disease, we can conquer this threat. That's the purpose of this video, to point the way to a better future where all generations, not just our own, remain free from the danger of antibiotic resistance. 1943 was a banner year for modern medicine, as the first effective drug treatment for TB, called streptomycin, was discovered. However, resistance to this drug was detected just a few years later, meaning that some patients had disease that could not be effectively treated with streptomycin. Several additional drugs have been developed over the years to fight TB, but the story has been much the same. Though these drugs remain effective for many, resistance has developed to all of them in at least some patients. Indeed, for the first time in 2012, so-called totally resistant strains were reported in India. These are strains of TB that are resistant not only to the most effective first-line drugs, such as streptomycin, isoniazid, and rifampin, but also to the most effective second-line drugs. Such tough-to-treat TB strains are currently far from American shores, but like any disease, it can spread. And when it does, what can we do to stop it? Some take a fatalistic view of this problem, including Margaret Chan, the Director General of the World Health Organization, who even declared an end to modern medicine as we know it. She said, quote, Some experts say we are moving back to the pre-antibiotic era. No, this will be a post-antibiotic era. A post-antibiotic era means, in effect, an end to modern medicine as we know it. Things as common as strep throat or a child's scratch knee could once again kill. Fortunately, the post-antibiotic era that Dr. Chan seems to view as an inevitability is still only a possibility. There are things we can do not only to slow the rise of resistance, but to reverse it. Indeed, as I write in my book, Game Changer, quote, many are resigned to the inevitability of antibiotic resistance. But there is hope. Recent advances in genetic testing have created new strategic options that hold the potential to reverse antibiotic resistance and in doing so to tame bacterial disease forever. It's easy to see how resistance to antibiotics tends to arise over time. 
as more and more drugs are prescribed to kill disease-causing bacteria, the strains of the disease that are most resistant to these drugs will tend to be the ones that survive, then multiply and take over the bacterial population, leaving us with disease that is more and more difficult to treat. Fortunately for us, there's a loophole in this logic, an implicit assumption without which drug treatment doesn't have to create the conditions for rising resistance. In particular, what if doctors could detect which patients have resistant disease before prescribing antibiotics? Those with resistant disease could then be given more powerful drugs or be put in isolation so that drug resistant strains could actually be controlled even more effectively than drug susceptible strains. If so, we would expect susceptible strains to be the ones that are most likely to survive, leaving the remaining disease easily treatable and hence less harmful for people. So, the essential strategic question to ask here is, can we diagnose the drugs that will be most effective at treating a patient's disease as quickly as we can diagnose the disease itself? As recently as a few years ago, before molecular diagnosis became practical, the process of testing for drug resistance took days and even weeks, too long for doctors to wait in most cases. But now, with molecular diagnostics, it's possible, at least in principle, to read a disease's genetic code, if you will, and determine exactly how best to treat it. The promise of this technology was hailed as far back as 2002 by Dr. Beverly Rogers, Chief of Pathology of the Children's Medical Center in Dallas. As she noted, the rapid diagnosis of childhood meningitis, sepsis, or even antibiotic resistance will soon be available in real time. There is great potential to identify infections faster, treat patients better, and save patient admissions to the hospital, resulting in cost savings to the healthcare system. She was talking about Cepheid's gene expert system, which at the time was just poised to enter the market thanks to a U.S. Army contract to detect anthrax. The magic behind the gene expert is a Nobel Prize winning process known as polymerase chain reaction, which allows the gene expert to identify if pre-specified strands of DNA are present in a biological sample. What this means is that samples can be placed directly into the machine, which can then tell you in about an hour what disease the patient has and whether that disease is drug resistant. In the United States, the first big application of the gene expert was MRSA, a nasty hospital-acquired staph infection resistant to the drug methicillin. More recently, the gene expert has made news with its tuberculosis test, which identifies whether a patient has TB and whether their disease is resistant to the drug rifampin. This TB application alone has led to the deployment of the gene expert in dozens of developing countries and spurred public health authorities together with the Gates Foundation to subsidize molecular TB diagnosis to the point that it now costs less than $10 to diagnose TB quickly and accurately. As Cepheid touts on its website, the gene expert system returns most test results in about an hour, including sample prep. With the gene expert technology, labs no longer need rows of equipment and extensively trained staff to access molecular testing. To briefly summarize all this, Molecular diagnosis can make it possible to determine which drugs are most effective to treat any given patient in a matter of hours at a cost as low as $10 per test in some cases. Once doctors can tell which patients are infected by drug-resistant disease, they can treat these patients with different drugs or isolate them from others or take still further steps to limit the transmissibility of their disease. This puts resistant bacteria at a disadvantage relative to their competition, bacteria that are susceptible to drug treatment, leaving only these easily treated susceptible bacteria for mankind to contend with. What's the ultimate message? Although we may never be able to rid ourselves of bacterial disease, we can potentially rid ourselves of drug resistance. Taking such steps now to reverse the rising tide of drug resistant bacteria would be a wonderful gift to leave future generations, don't you think? A world where people might still get sick with diseases like tuberculosis, but in which effective treatment is always available for all.